Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yesha Yahoo, where we bring you the gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, to address the problems of the modern world. Today's topics covered, what was the ark, how was the ark made, what was in the ark, Exodus 25, verse 10. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. So, first of all, what was the ark? Let's look into it. Many of us are familiar with the Ark of the Covenant from reading the Old Testament, or for us non-bibliophiles, watching Steven Spielberg's blockbuster hit, Raiders of the Lost Ark. In the film, the Nazis seek the ancient artifact to use as a deadly weapon against the Allies, and the producers were onto something here, as the Ark was supposed to hold the lethal and devastating power of God. As shown in the film, when the lid flips open and the bad guys get fried. Speculations have come and gone as to the whereabouts of the Ark, and this being one of history's best-kept mysteries seems likely to stay a secret. If we knew where the Ark was, as one of the most sought-after religious artifacts in the world, it would probably be behind bulletproof glass, with cues around the block to see it before you could say King Nebuchadnezzar. In this episode of the Infographics Show, the search continues for the answer. The answer to the question that has fascinated theologians, Bible students, and archaeologists for centuries. Where could the Ark of the Covenant be? Exodus chapter 25, verse 11. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without. Shalt thou overlay it, and thou shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. Well, you know, at first glance, you look at that, um, a crown round about, overlaid with pure gold within and without, and a crown. So what does does that mean? Um, The Bible is a, a coded textbook. Gold generally represents righteousness. But the fact that they say, overlay it with pure gold within and without that means this thing it's not just covered on the outside with righteousness it is righteousness itself it's got righteousness on the inside and that's a mark marker of god himself or elohim the elohim themselves so the fact that they want it overlaid within and without with gold. It gives off a certain uh, deity, symbolically. And then they mention a crown of gold round about it. Now, that is symbolic of an actual crown of gold. So this box is overlaid outside with gold, it's overlaid inside with gold, and is essentially wearing a crown of gold. Yeah, this is very symbolic. So, you know, these are things you have to look at. To understand the Bible, you have to be able to read the, the, the encoded passages. I mean, there's nothing said in the book for no reason. I mean, there's always a reason behind something being said. And once you start picking up on that uh, idea, you start, you start reading it a certain way, a different way. You know, at first, first time you read the Bible, you probably look at it like it's some kind of book a regular old book. Well, it's not really a book. It's scriptures. They made it into a book. But it's scriptures. And these scriptures, these codes, lead you to salvation. And it's coded for a reason. Because these things were going to be passed down generation to generation. And yeah, you got enemies out there who would love to pervert and, 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 and 
grab the scriptures and take them for their own and, you know, make claims that are not true. And, but because it's layered in such a way, and it's not just one layer, it's several layers. And, and it's funny because without believing, you almost can't get to the next layer. So it, the trick is you got to first believe and then another door opens and it shows you some more things. And then it brings you to another level and then another door opens and it brings you to another level. So somebody just trying to basically, you know, co-opt the scriptures, they'd have a difficult time because of how it's actually encoded. And you, you start, you know, like when someone says the King James Bible is the, is, is the, 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 the infallible word of God kind of thing. Yes, yeah, a nice transliteration of the scripture of the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, you know, writings. But it's every time you ch- every time you switch between languages, especially a Middle Eastern. I hate that term, Middle East, but I'll call it this way: Northeast African, Oriental type language. And if you go to the Far East, they still use pictures. And these pictures have meanings. That's the way the original Hebrew was. And and Hebrew is the language of creation. What language do you think Yah spoke to Adam in? People don't think about that. But he was speaking to him in Hebrew. That's the original language. And every letter was a picture. And each letter meant something. So it's a, it's a descriptive language. It's, it, it's made, it's developed to put a picture in your mind. The words themselves create a picture in your mind. So anyway, but this box called the Ark of the Covenant is representative of something. And we'll get to it towards the end and a few other things. But, uh, you know, I won't uh, uh, belabor the point. So let's uh, move on. How was the ark made? Again, we have to look at the the little details that tell us what this ark actually represents. And we know it's overlaid with gold within and out. That's righteousness. It's righteous on the outside. It's righteous on the inside. And it's got a crown of gold. You're probably figuring this out already. But, you know, this box is symbolic of something. The Ark was a sacred chest built by the ancient Israelites under the instructions and designs of God. It was used to house and protect the testimony, the Ten Commandments written on two stone tablets. It measured 2.5 cubits long, 1.5 cubits wide, and 1.5 cubits high. It was built mainly of acacia wood and was overlaid with gold with an attractive artistic border. It had two golden cherubs, one at each end, facing each other. Four rings of cast gold above its feet, and through those rings would be slotted wooden poles used for carrying and transporting the ark. It was originally kept on the most holy compartment of the tabernacle, a tent of worship, and was screened off so that ordinary people couldn't catch a glimpse of it. Only the high priest could enter the tent and marvel at this holiest of artifacts once a year on Atonement Day. Later, the Ark was allegedly moved to Solomon's Temple. The Bible uses a number of terms to describe the Ark, including the Ark of Jehovah, the Ark of Strength, and the Ark of Testimony. So Exodus 25 and verse 20. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another, Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherub- cherubims be. And thou shalt put m- the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. The testimony that I shall give thee. What is this testimony? Well, the testimony is the Ten Commandments, among other things. So what was in the ark? Uh, let's look at that a little bit. And we know the Ten Commandments. What else? In Exodus chapter 25, after God has given Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, he gives him detailed instructions about building the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle to house it in. 
The whole thing is covered in gold, with a gold ring at each corner for acacia wood rods to be placed through for carrying and holding the ark off the ground. But what goes inside it? In various places in the Hebrew Bible, the ark is said to hold the tablets on which the Ten Commandments were carved, and a pot full of manna, the miraculous food God provided for the Israelites to eat as they wandered the wilderness. The Christian epistle to the Hebrews, however, also mentions it contained a staff belonging to Moses' brother Aaron, which miraculously grew flowers and almonds in the book of Numbers. While the Israelites marched through the desert, the ark usually led the way, but whenever they set up camp, it was placed within a temporary shelter known as the tabernacle. According to Exodus, the tabernacle was basically a tent made up of layers of curtains, veils, and skins. So Exodus 25 and verse 22. And there will I meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So this is a spot where uh, the Most High will commune with Moses, i.e. the children of Israel. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a throne. It's a, I, I think what you're looking at here is a makeshift model of what's actually in heaven. And so he says he would commune through this mercy seat. Well, okay, so the Ark of the Covenant is inlaid with, is uh, overlaid with gold within and without, it has a crown of gold. Inside of it are the Ten Commandments. The commandments are at, at its heart, okay? The bread of heaven, manna, is also in there. The bread, okay, I've, I've, let's think about it. The commandments are in its midst. The bread of life in the desert was inside of it and Aaron's rod that budded well Aaron's rod was interesting because it also turned into a snake didn't it in front of Pharaoh so it's this, I, I can call it the serpent rod too right you know um and of course a serpent would be symbolic of sin you know but it also budded it brought forth new life so you can look at it a couple ways, but if I have to break it on down, it's talking about an individual. And through this individual will the Most High commune with thee from above, the mercy seat. So let's see, who could that individual possibly be? I think you all are getting the picture here. So this arc is very symbolic. Um, everything in this Old Testament, Old Covenant, written for the children of Israel is prophetic. And it is basically speaking of the Messiah. So when, when the Messiah says in this, for this new covenant, this New Testament, you know, I, I hate to break it to you people, but he said he didn't do away with the commandments. He said, Instead of being written on tables of stone, they will be written in your heart. So if your heart is not to keep the commandments, you are without Christ. I know you think you, <laughs> you probably, oh, there's grace. Yeah, but you know what? If the commandments are not written on your heart, which is even more strict than it, when it, than it was when it was written on stone, what are you talking about? I mean, he specifically said in the Old Testament, it was written on tables of stone. In the New Testament, it will be written on your heart, in your midst. That's why the Ten Commandments are in the midst of this box. And this box is symbolic of Christ, utterly righteous, wearing a crown of righteousness, with the law within its midst, with the bread of life, manna, within it. And Aaron's rod that budded, but it was also a serpent before time, right? Serpent representing sin. The Messiah being made sin for us to save us. So all of this is this box. I mean, it's kind of like the Messiah. 
in box form before his appearing. So the Messiah would essentially be the one that would appear. I, I, I can go into that a little more. I'm not at this time. I'm trying to get somewhere with this. But this Yahuwah, who is salvation, would appear before Moses above the mercy seat, above the pre- high priest. And so this gets deep, but uh, there's time for that. We're, I'm going to move you along slowly, um, and we'll get into it a little deeper. But at the end of the day, um, the Ark of the Covenant is missing, right? Well, strange. It, it came up missing. But who else is missing physically? The Messiah is missing physically. The Ark of the Covenant is missing physically. Now, the oracles of this, or the tenet of this, we're going to dig into, and it, it, there's a meaning behind this. There's a reason the Ark is not found, right? And then we'll look at who might have taken it, who might have it, or is it hidden? Either way, there's, there's a story being told. There's a reason it's not with us anymore because Messiah has come and gone. You don't need that box because the real box was here amongst us. In the beginning was God and the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh. So keep that in mind. Now, this is going to be a several part series. This is just part one. But this box, the Ark of the Covenant, came up missing. There have been times where, um, and I'm thinking of the battle with the Philistines, where the Israelites were not right, the priests were not right. Eli, the priest, and his sons were doing, doing well, Eli, Eli's sons were doing mischief. And so the Israelites go into battle with this Ark of the Covenant and it gets taken by the Philistines. And it was a big deal. And uh, Eli keeled over and died when he heard the news. It's kind of crazy. That's how important it was. So that story is in 1 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 16. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled to, today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there hath been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, have been slain. And the story is, he kills over and dies. That's the end of this, my friends. And I, I bid you all farewell and adieu. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Share this, with, share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you guys. And thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. Thank you all so much, and shalom. See you on the next video.